Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, we're diving into the brand new version of Lightroom Classic, and we're gonna be taking this photo from this to this in just a matter of minutes. So sit back, relax, maybe even open up Lightroom and edit along with me. But either way, this is the photo we're gonna be editing today. So without further ado, let's dive into Lightroom Classic and let's get this video started. All right, so here we are inside of Lightroom Classic. And just before we dive into the edit, I do wanna let you know that Lightroom Classic has just gone through a load of brand new updates. So if you haven't already, go ahead and update your Lightroom Classic and you'll be met with two major changes, which are point color, which is something that we're definitely gonna be diving into in this video. And then something that we're not gonna really be using because it doesn't really work with this photo is the lens blur. And this pretty much allows you to add fake bokeh or background blur to your shots, which is incredible. Of course, this works best when there's a subject in the frame or when you are taking something and there's a clear defiance between the foreground and the background. Here, it's just a landscape shot, nothing too crazy going on where we need to add a load of lens blur. But either way, these are two huge new changes inside of Lightroom Classic. But with that said, let's dive in to the edit. All right, so first things first, we are going to crop this to make the composition just a little bit sweeter. And we're also gonna crop this for four by five because of course, this bad boy's going on Instagram. So we are going to crop just like that. That might be just a little bit tight, to be honest. Maybe just bring this out a little bit more. It's kind of a little bit of a strange composition with the road coming from the left, sort of. The road and the mountain doesn't line up specifically, I guess, on 100%. But either way, this looks good. I'm happy with this composition. So first things first, let's dive into the light tab, the basic tab here. We're just gonna increase the shadows ever so slightly and probably decrease our highlights just a little bit like that. Maybe increase the contrast just a little bit to add a little bit of punch back into the shot after increasing or increasing the shadows and decreasing the highlights. We're gonna come here and drop the texture, or drop the clarity and the texture just like that. And then we're also just gonna increase the dehaze just a little bit, a little before and after, just like that. Of course, nothing too crazy going on at this stage. It's just correcting the image and giving us a great base to start with. So that is the basic tab more or less wrapped up. We can now dive in into the tone curve here, where we are just gonna lower the shadows, increase the highlights just a little bit here, and then we're gonna raise those blacks. When you raise the blacks on the tone curve, this just gives a really nice black fade over the entire dark part of the image, which is something I absolutely love. Of course, you don't wanna push this too far. If we do increase the, uh, the, the blacks of the tone curve a little bit too much, it gives it too much of a fade. I like sitting somewhere just a little bit up from absolutely nothing. And I think things are looking pretty cool here. All right, now on to the fun part of this edit, the color mixer. Now, like I said, we've got our usual HSL sliders here. So you get the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders just here. But if you head over next to mixer to point color, this is where things change a whole lot. So what we're gonna do is we are going to tap on the dropper here and let's, for example, select this kind of area. So we wouldn't have this exact hue in our mixer. As you can see here, it would be somewhere between purple and blue. But now with point color, we can actually have this exact mixer, which is great, which means we can just affect this color a lot more specifically than we would be able to if we were using the mixer tab, which is such a welcome change. And the best part about this as well is we can change exactly where we're selected. So right here, you can kind of change the brightness of everything. And if you come to the bottom of point color down here, you can see range. Now, what this is gonna do is this is gonna show us where we have and haven't selected and where we are and aren't making any adjustments. So if I hit visualize range, you can see that we get like a, a bit of a weird desaturated look over the entire image apart from where we're adjusting. So let's, for example, you can see definitely on this, uh, on the face of the mountain here and even on these little bollards on the road here, if I check this off, you can see everything gets saturated again. If I check it on, everything gets desaturated apart from where we are selected. And then of course we can increase or decrease where we're selected. So this is the range, you know, of course, if we want more selected, we can increase our range. If we want less selected, we can decrease our range. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to desaturate just a little bit and maybe also increase the luminance ever so slightly. We can then turn that back off. And then if we hit this, just like that, we can really start to select and play with certain colors. Now, of course, this is gonna be best used in tandem with the color mixer tab. So of course, don't just isolate and go all on point color. This is gonna be best used when you're balancing both of them out. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. So one of the other colors that I want to select here is just here. I don't really know what this color is. And to be honest with you, it doesn't look 
like Lightroom does either, but we are just gonna desaturate this. I'm gonna visualize the range. Pretty much nothing is selected, which is fairly strange. Okay, yeah, it's got it there. But more or less, we're just gonna remove all the color from this as I don't like that weird kind of yellowy green hue in the sky. This more or less removes it and we're good to go. So something else that we're gonna do here inside the color range is we're gonna drop the luminance of the yellow ever so slightly and the orange. And this is just gonna bring back a little bit more detail on the side of this mountain, as you can see there, a little before and after. And we're also gonna increase the saturation because something that I wanna do is emphasize that this was shot at golden hour. And with that golden light hitting the face of the mountain there, this is a really cool contrast in color and edge and yeah. Hopefully things just look good. Anyway, we're gonna continue on with our edit here. I think things are starting to shape up quite nicely. Yes, the edit is somewhat subtle, but just wait for the masking section of this video. Believe me, that is where all the magic happens. We're then gonna come in here, desaturate our blues ever so slightly. We're gonna pretty much kill off all the purples and we're gonna turn a lot of the purples into blue as well. We are definitely trying to sell that orange and teal look here as I have a feeling that this is the perfect photo for it. And more or less, that's our colors sorted. We're gonna add just a little bit of blue into the shadows here. I know that already looks fairly crazy, but we're gonna dial it back. I feel like just a slight tint, a slight hint of certain colors in certain regions definitely make for the better edit. I'm really not a fan of, you know, flooding the shadows with blue. I just like dialing it right back so it's super, super subtle. And um, yeah, I feel like that's where I get the best results by far. All right, we are looking fairly nice here. Maybe dial this back a little bit more. And I am very happy with our colors. I have a feeling there's a little bit of a purple hue over this entire mountain range here. So what we might do is come in here and just adjust the blues a little bit. I'm gonna desaturate them as well. Maybe increase the luminance just a little bit. All right, things are looking tasty. Now I'm gonna dive past uh, the detail. I don't sharpen my images whatsoever and I don't need to use any denoise features because this was shot at 320 ISO. The lens correction is already sorted, which is perfect. And if we disable this, you can see that there's quite a lot of warping in vignette. Lyrum's handled that, it's taken it away for us. I like the, the whole way this, this photo looks to me. I don't need to adjust it whatsoever. Let's move on past the lens blur. Once again, we don't need to touch this at all. Effects, we're gonna do all of our vignettes and all of our, I guess, light directing in masking so we don't need to touch this and then in calibration this is our last tiny little effect where we're going to be changing the colors i'm just going to be dialing the blue hue primary over to the left and we're going to be saturating it just a little bit and more or less we're going to be doing the same thing on the green here and the opposite on the reds a little turn this one off and turn it back on it's super subtle but to me it makes the difference all right so this before after is our edit so far now we dive in to the fun part, and this is where the masking happens. So first things first, like I said, we're gonna take control of our vignettes. I'm gonna just make a radial filter over the entire image. I'm then gonna invert it, which is how we can select the outside of the uh, outside of the mask here, and then we're just gonna drop our exposure. Now this is not gonna be the only mask we add, believe me. We are then gonna come to the road down here, and we are also going to be dropping the exposure here. And this just helps you kind of focus in on the mountain a little bit harder. If we just turn this off, as you can see, a little bit more distracting, a little bit less distracting. And this is exactly what we're after. And the same thing with this one here. It just kind of helps the eye focus in when the viewer sees the shot. All right, so things are looking pretty tasty, but we are far from done. We're gonna add another radial filter over here from where the light is coming from. And then we're gonna scroll down to dehaze, which is just here and we are going to drop the dehaze ever so slightly, and we're also going to increase the exposure to kind of sell that the light is coming from this direction. Now, obviously that's kind of washed out this up here, which is not what we want to do, so we're about to go and fix that. And, oh, I also want to come in here and drop the clarity as well. Now, if we come back in to our normal tab, out of the masking tab, we are going to just drop the luminance of the yellows and the oranges, and then we're also going to increase the saturation on both of those to bring back those colors before and after things are starting to shape up. 
I'm getting very happy with this edit. I know it's subtle, but this is the thing about photo editing. You don't always have to go up and over the top and make sure everything looks crazy and it's popping and it's wild. Something subtle just like this is sometimes all you need. And as you can see, it's not easily done. If you do want it to be easily done, you can go and check out my master collection of Lightroom presets. They're linked down below and you can use this discount code at the checkout for a cheeky little discount. So if you wanna save yourself a load of time and get the very similar results to what I'm getting right here, you can do so. Go check out my presets and let me know what you think of them down below. But back to the video now where we're just gonna change a handful more things and I think we're gonna be done with this edit. First things first, I'm going to increase the aspect here, which is just gonna squeeze the mountain up just a little bit. And as you can see here, we've now got this beautiful line that we're gonna to have to deal with. So we're just gonna increase the crop on this side and increase the crop on this side and a little bit more. There we go. Okay, things are looking good. There's the before and after. We're also just gonna rotate this ever so slightly as well. I think it was a little bit crooked before. Okay, things are looking good now. And then one last touch for good luck. We're gonna come in here. We're gonna add another radial filter as I feel like the first one didn't do enough. Boom, there we go. Before, after, I absolutely love this edit and I love this shot just as much as I hope you guys do too. So that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. I know Lightroom has just made some pretty serious changes to how you can edit your photos, which is amazing. And soon I will be releasing a full Lightroom walkthrough of where I use lens blur as well, because I know that tool is so powerful. And this is something that you should be using in nearly all of your edits. Well at least nearly all of your edits that need it. But anyway, guys, that's gonna wrap up today's video. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.